Hello everyone, this is Roland again. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about project structure and how to organize your documentation. What you probably saw on ePlan sample projects is something like this where we actually use three level of documentation rating. The first one is actually a document type, the second one being a location designation and in some cases your page has actually three levels where we defined a document type so you can see it here a document type a location designation and a functional designation now where does this come from why why do we do this well technically the idea is that every single component can have three different aspects to define it so to design and to define a specific component, like in this case, this uh, specific um, here, what is this? This is a safety switch. We can assign three different things. The first thing is the location, physical location where this component is. The second thing is what general function designation can we assign it to? And then third, but not least, is the identifier that actually follows a certain number of rules. Now, technically, uh, the device itself, when you follow closely, only shows you the very last item that tells you FC1 to des designate what the item is, but the rest of the information comes from this section of the page here, where we specify, okay, equal GAA is used in this particular project to represent everything that is 400 volt power supply, and plus A1 is the enclosure one these structural elements really come from something like this where we said you know anything how to read schematics you always have to look at the bottom of the page here and once you are at the bottom of the page you can see the equal function plus location and then a certain page number and this is actually what reflects here the designation the total designation of the components this information today can be found if you look up some IC documents like this document here and you scroll down. At one point in time, you will end up in an area where you see this specific cube, which refers to a functional aspect, a location aspect, and the device component itself. This is quite interesting as a structure because you can look for a specific function, you can look for a specific location, and you can find very quickly what does the component do and where is it to be found. It's primarily also found here in the navigator where you can see here all the components that are re re related to the power supply are here they're all in the enclosure a1 and here are the different components that are related to this anything related to 24 vdc is actually here and you can see some components on also placed in the location a2 so it actually structures the devices within your uh, project. Now, what we also have is the differentiation in ePlan between interactive pages and automatic pages. Now, the automatic pages are things like a table of content or a title block or uh, an overview page or even later down the road, some uh, construction lists, you know, that are used somewhere. Now, this is actually a differentiation that comes from ePlan because we have pages we create and we have automatically generated pages. Now, how do we structure now our project? Here, I actually came up with an interesting idea and it all goes back to uh, uh, the, the so-called infinity loop that we have somewhere in ePlan. And I, I use that one to structure my, my project because uh, whether you work in IC or you work in NFPA, NFPA drawings that are more left to right than top down and you know the symbology is also different in NFPA we follow this as a guideline here the NFPA 79 and when you scroll down you will see how different schematics are done typically when I do everything according to NFPA and here this is the proof if you pick up a new project here and you follow the NFPA MM base 01 project I'm just going to call it here uh, my company NFPA metric and this is going to be my template 
The problem is the structure of the pages is only cre created at one single level. So we only have sequential pages. So all my pages are dumped in one level. So I only have a page one, two, three, four, five, six, which is fine because the way we actually want to number our components is by page and row number. So technically, if I take here a motor overload or motor or a complete circuit like this, place it here on line 403, then I expect actually all my components to be named after this particular line. What I also do expect, and this depends on you know the plot frame that you use, you may have a plot frame that has one or two ladders, you know, it really depends on the size you want in implant. We can modify them uh, to, to, you know, whatever we need. So here they can be a little bit bigger, can be a little bit smaller, but all in all, it all comes down to when you place uh, a power line in here from one page and you go to the next page, you actually expect these row numbers to actually help you create these cross references. Okay. Now this makes a lot of sense. If I create a new page here, um, I'm going to create maybe a, a new page. I'd like to have a page that goes in front of it. 3.1 people don't like that too much because then you have a 3.1 type of thing. And here you just put a cross reference that cross reference in ePlan will then pick up these row and in, in, in line numbers, so to say, you know, for the cross reference. And that is all fine and dandy. We like that. Uh, what I prefer is, of course, to have these renumbered after a certain time. So numbers start by, let's say, my schematic pages may start at page 10. So I get these 10, 11 structure. And of course, once you've done something like this in ePlan, you may have to renumber your devices uh to match exactly what we just did here you know the row numbers uh matching exactly the the ex place where they are but to me this is not sufficient because when i look at this i'm missing this information about where these components are so what i like to do is i enable for my components and here I go up to the project properties. I enable in the structure, I enable this one here called the function designation, location designation, and document type. And I at least enable the location designation for most of my objects. So this will at least tell me where these components are. Sometimes things like cables are a little bit harder to assign to a location designation because they go from to somewhere, right? Same thing for uh, interruption points. Sometimes you may or may not want to have the location designation activated. So technically what I just did here is I enabled the possibility in my project to create uh, a specific um, structure that can organize my pages a little bit differently. So I can say these three pages here, for instance, just to, to show you, are and will be assigned to a specific document type. Now, since I have never used any document types, I cannot use this, this option here, but I'm going to use basically E or ENG for engineering. I'm going to use A1 as my default. And the functional designation here, I may just omit for the moment, not use it. And what this does, it actually creates a kind of a, a small um, structure, folder structure. These are not in exactly folders. These are basically just a tree view display, because if I go here to the list view, you won't see this. So it's really just a way to display it. But interestingly is that now every component is now assigned to that location. And if I look up in my um, navigator, I can see that all my devices are actually now assigned to, to, to that enclosure A1 plus A1, which is not exactly the case because here, of course, the motor should be um, somewhere out in the field. So I will be using here like a structure box. This is basically just an area inside this page that I redefine to be a different area. Uh, it could be something as general as Z1 for zone one. And there we go. You just reorganize basically all these objects that are inside here 
to now belong to Z1, which is a new location. Now, this on top, what actually can be done is you can, in ePlan, assign these different structure elements with different priorities or different uh, hierarchy levels. In, in my case, I like to use the document type as the very first organizing structure element, which reorganizes my page a little bit differently. So this way, when I look at this page here, instead of seeing the location designation and then the schematics below, I see the schematics. So I can have all my schematics, all my engineering data, all under one and the same uh, structure element here. So if I want to create a page for my second enclosure um, and all the components would be on the second enclosure, I could and I, I would see those. Now, what's also interesting about ePlan is that, as you know, we have a series of reports that can be generated. Now, by default, I believe that not too many reports are actually generated it's really up to you to come and create the template here but in my case i do have a default report template that follows a certain guideline that i i have you can go to our websites and you can see this i really pretty much imagine here on eplan canada so eplan canada gives you also a link to all the other uh, areas we have Typically in here, you will find this Rital and ePlan, discover more about engineering and manufacturing. And you can see here, these are basically the different uh, life cycle steps that you go through when you build or when you engineer a project, right? So we have engineering, sourcing, and manufacturing. And within manufacturing, the documentation can be transformed in such a way that it can be ideal for the kitting portion, which is actually part of the sourcing, so where you get all your parts. We have another portion for the cutting of the docks and the rails. We have one for the modifications, NC drilling, that can be done. An assembly of the terminals and terminal strips that can all be assembled in the panel. The wiring itself, and then, of course, the panel is done, and you can continue to operations, So, which is field insulation, cables, and things like that. Now, this in mind is what I actually have created here as a report template, which pretty much generates automatically my different uh, reports. Uh, and it, 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 it places every single report in the exact structural element that I expect. So if I run this here, either with generate project report, here, generate project reports, you will see that automatically we get some additional substructures that come out of it, right? We have here some general documents. These are just general documents here. And these general documents like table of content, title blocks, I usually want them to, to come in the very, very first position. So I can move this document type D, which is just general documentation. I can move it up in one position here. Then I have my engineering. I can even put my engineering title here this is general documents, documents. Um, this is my bill of material. Of course, this is for the sourcing people. And I imagine for every single uh, group, a specific set of documents, you know, that is perfect for them. And of course, once this is done, manufacturing technology, and then out in the operations to follow that guideline I just showed you there. And what this does, it pretty much reorganizes, boom, here my complete document set. I have my engineering, which is my schematic. Then I have my bill of material. This is my bill of material, so I can go and buy those components. I generate a little bit further down. I generate the different items starting with a kitting list. This is a one-by-one -one list for every individual area we have. Then I have another item that is specific for terminal strip or terminal diagrams, which were mounted in the uh, in, in, in the schematic somewhere. And I have here some wiring uh, documentation to help you actually um, create uh, and, and assemble or, or actually do the landing of the connections inside the panel. I haven't done the 3D aspect of it, but you can see here, the interesting thing is I went from a pure sequential numbering 
scheme to a project structure that allows me, enables me to organize my documentation by document type and location designation. And that automatically then reorganized everything else down the road. So I really invite you to take this, make uh, good use of it, uh, ask our ePlan experts to help you out there. What is the perfect project structure on your side to organize this project? Because the bigger the project is, the more convenient it is to use a, a, the, the right structure. IC does it as a standard. You can use that as, as, as a guideline. And of course, when you're finished, all you have to do is here create your basic project, which is then your template uh, that comes with that arrangement. And the next time around, all you have to do is populate it with macros and symbols, uh, have the numbering done if necessary, and make good use of ePlan. So this was Roland Jung from ePlan Canada. Come and see us, you know, if you're um, if you need some help. We have uh, some interesting services. We often talk about the ePlan experience here, which is um, a series of eight field of actions that uh, tailor uh, your priorities um, in, in, in terms of what exactly you need from ePlan, how to structure the documentation for your specific needs. And uh, starting from the IT infrastructure to the product that you do, the platform setup itself. As you can see, we have eight fields of action. Please come and talk to our people here and they will be able to help you. So thank you. This was Roland from ePlan.